you guys are definitely in for a treat today. This is going to be our most ambitious guide to paint all things so blight grave lots, so make sure you watch till the end. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the Studio Collectors. So today I'm very proud to present to you our most ambitious video today and we're going to paint so many different types of materials for all things so like Grave Lords. So we have cut this entire video down to its chapters and you can use them for a multitude of your so like models. Because Laukavai is such a complex model, we have selected her as the model so that we can use her to demonstrate a large variety of models so that you can paint out every single Soul Blight Gravelot model using this tutorial. So for example, her skin can be also used to paint out other vampire lots and Reduka the Wolf in the future. As well as the red armor that we have selected her to be wearing and you can use this tutorial to paint up your Castellai Blood Knights as well. So for this video, we are also going to be continuing with how we painted the Curse City models with the red underglow as you can see on many of our Curse City models. So if you're not familiar with this style, why not check out our entire Curse City painting playlist? The links will be included in the description below. So without further ado, here are the chapters for this video. First off, we are going to start with airbrush and priming. Then we are going to paint the Avangori Dynasty beast body on Lockerby. Next, we are going to paint the shiny non-metallic red armor on the Castellite Dynasty. To pair with the red armor, we have also created a short tutorial of how to paint black cloth. After that is done, we are going to move on to non-metallic metal brass and non-metallic metal silver. As for the skin, we will be covering how to paint Soul Blight Grave Lord skin. And we're going to be doing a tutorial of how to paint Soul Blight Grave Lord's hair. And lastly, we'll conclude the entire tutorial by doing some base construction as well as some stonework masterclass. So you don't want to miss that out. So this is going to be a really comprehensive video and a lot of time and effort has gone into producing this video. So I would really appreciate it if you can give us a like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out a lot and you won't be missing any of our future painting tutorials where we'll be painting out Lord Croak as well as Cracknos. So let's get started with chapter 1 where we'll be doing the priming as well as the airbrushing to create the foundations for this model. So welcome to the first chapter of this video. In this chapter, we'll be creating the foundations of this model and we'll be painting the red underglow and the ambient light so that the rest of the model can build upon this. I've changed my entire paint range so some of these colors might appear a little unfamiliar. So if you have something close or something equivalent, just go on and use that paint. This guy is not really fixed so you just need similar colors and you can achieve a very very similar effect. So a little outline for this chapter, for the airbrushing stage, we're going to create the red environment on this model. Then we're going to lay on the strong object source lighting from the bottom left corner and place in the cold moonlight for the rest of the model. So if you don't have an airbrush, don't worry because we have already done a tutorial of how you can achieve this similar effect without an airbrush. This is done in our painting Reduka video, so check it out, links will be in the description below. So without further ado, let's get these colors ready for the airbrushing stage. Get these colors ready and let's get airbrushing the foundation of this model right now. Alright, so after assembling the model, we are now starting to spray the model all the way from the bottom using AK Generation 3 Burn Rate. I'm doing this stage pretty liberally and I'm trying to cover all the nooks and crannies to make sure that this red glow permeates the entire bottom half of the model. I want this temperature to show through. So for this stage, I'm starting with a zenithal highlight. I'm currently using AK Gen 3 White. I'm trying to do this in several thin coats and trying to pick up the volumes and the details that I want to focus on. For this model, I'm actually picking up the human half of Laukavai and trying to pick up some of the animal half from her body. Right now, I'm going over with an entire very thin glaze of AK Gen 3 Turquoise. I find this AK Gen 3 Turquoise really vibrant 
and it stays vibrant even after it's dried. The white is used as the base so that this color can have its luminosity even after it's dried. So moving on, I'm gonna be reapplying AK Gen 3 white onto the top of the model and just picking up the volumes. This model is currently being blue tech, that's why you can see some of its parts moving. And if you want to see my sub assemblies, why not check on the previous video where I unbox the locker vibe. Okay, so this is how the model is looking right now. Currently, I'm applying AK Generation 3 deep red from the bottom just to pick out the warmer colors that will be symbolizing the red glow coming from the bottom left of this model. And there we have it. This is the foundation stage of the airbrush and we can already see hints of the red glow coming along very very nicely now. So finally I'm just adding on a little spritz of white just to reinforce the entire model. And this is it for the airbrushing stage. So now that we have done the foundations in airbrush, it brings us to the next chapter where we'll be painting the beastly body of Lauka Vai. So let's move on to painting Lauka Vai's beastly body from the Avangori dynasty. So from what I know about the lore and story about Lauka Vai, this process of transforming vampires into this beastly form involves meditating in front of some death energy for 10 days and 10 nights. It sounds really intense but it's good because you get extra arms and extra legs. At this stage, I'd like to point out some little details that you should be aware of. I want you to be aware of the subtle temperature variations on the skin tones. So for painting the beastly body of this model, you're gonna need these colors right here. So let's get them ready and let's get started on Lockervite's body right now. So first and foremost, I'm going to go over the entire bestial body using Games Workshop Contrast, Atomatic Blue, and this is thinned down in the ratio of 1 drop of paint to 3 drops of medium. This allows me to really control the opacity and not bring too much saturation to the model while showcasing the form of the model. Right here, I'm also going to be using a thinned down version of Peridon Turquoise from Games Workshop Contrast and I'm placing it all over the skin membranes. I'm also going to be using this color to sort of like glaze over the areas where I want the flesh to look a little bit more dark. And these areas are such as the feet on the bestial body. Okay, this creates some color temperature differences and also creates some saturation differences. So I'm beginning an initial layer of deck tan mixed in with AK Gen 3 pale blue and I'm doing this in a scratching fashion so that I can create some textures on this skin so that the model looks more complex than it already is. This adds a lot of complexity and adds a little bit more definition to the model. Gradually I'm adding more and more deck tan into the mix and I'm also going to be applying this in a scratching fashion. So previously I mentioned that I used Pterodon Turquoise also for the feet. You can notice that the feet on this bestial body is slightly more saturated than the rest of the body and this is why it is such. So moving on, this is almost pure AK Gentry Deck 10 already. I'm just picking out the wrinkles. So why do I choose AK Gen 3 Deck 10? Because I find that Deck 10 is, well, while it's a warm grey, it contrasts very nicely against this very cool blue that we've done on the Atomatic Blue from the GW Contrast and creates a very nice well-temperature gradients. Okay, 
Now I'm moving on and I'm adding in a little bit of AK Gentry Pale Sand into the mix. Now using the Pale Sand, Pure Pale Sand, I'm just picking up some minor highlights and creating some texture to increase the complexity of the bestial body. I don't want the bestial body just to have smooth skin, I want to make sure that this skin appears pasty and rough. And little skin pores can be seen. So now that the beastly body is done, let's move on to painting the shiny red non-metallic armor of the Castelli dynasty. Do remember that you can use this exact same tutorial and this color combination on your Soul Blight Gravelord Blood Knights. Because this armor is going to be glossy, I'll be applying some concepts which I have mentioned in my previous video where I painted Captain America's shield as well as his body and I talk about how to render glossy and matte surfaces. The link for that video will be in the description below. So for this chapter, we're going to need these colors right here. So let's get them ready and let's paint the red armor of the Castelli dynasty right now. So right here, I'm going to be base coating the red Castelli armor. Currently using a mix of burnt red and AK Gen 3 Oxford. This is done in an even style and I'm trying to make this as opaque as possible. At this point of time, I'm also trying to be as neat as possible because AK Gentry paints tend to be pretty opaque. Alright, so right here, what we're going to do is gradually I'm adding in a little bit of AK Gentry Deep Red into AK Gentry Warm Red. This will serve as the second layer and I'm starting to pick up the volumes for this. I'm gonna be pretty liberal with this stage and you wanna just pick on some of the areas that will catch on the light. Gradually I'm adding in AK Gen 3 Deep Red and I'm moving on to try to achieve a pure Deep Red layer. I find the AK Gen 3 Deep Red really really vibrant. It is very very similar to what we have on Game Workshop as the Evil Sun Scarlet. It has a slight orange tinge but so much more vibrant. Okay, gradually I'm adding in a little bit of AK Gentry Luminous Flash. I find Luminous Flash really awesome because it retains its value very nicely. It really has that luminosity. And just look at how a little bit of Luminous Flash added into AK Gentry Deep Red allows the Deep Red to really shine. Just gradually adding in bit by bit of Luminous Flash. At this point of time, I want to bring your attention to the mix. You don't want to add too much Luminous Flash to the point where the red starts to become pink. At the highest highlight for this stage, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to ensure that the red still registers as red and I can make sure that this red armor from the Castelli Dynasty doesn't look too pink. Okay, so now just adding in a touch more Luminous Flash from AK Gentry and slowly, gradually picking up the sharp points and shine of this armor. So now that the red armor is done, we're going to look at other materials to pair off with just that. In this very short tutorial, I'll be covering how to paint black cloth and this makes a very good combination with the red armor that we have just painted. Do remember that this tutorial can also be used to paint the black capes and other cloth materials on your Soul Blight Gravelord models. So for this chapter of the tutorial, you're going to need these colors right here. So let's gather up these colors and let's get started on the black cloth right now. So now I've base coated the entire black cloth in AK Gen 3 Smoke Black. I'm currently starting to pick up the initial highlights. Currently I'm using a mix of AK Gen 3 Dark Sea Blue mixed in with a little bit of AK Gen 3 Dead Pen. I find that this creates a very desaturated green that's slightly warm and it produces this pretty amazing effect on black cloth. 
gradually I'm adding in a little bit more of the deck tan and I'm trying to create this warm black right here. Just picking on some of the details and the volumes to ensure that this black cloth shines out even when contrasted against the cold body of this Avangori dragon thing that Laukavai is, well, grown on. Okay, so now right here, I'm adding in a little bit, just a touch of AK Gentry Ivory. Just to pick on the highest highlights and to create the shine on this black cloth material. So now that we are mostly done with the model, we can look at the embellishments that are on this model. So if you are looking to quickly do up this model and get her on the tabletop, I recommend just using metallic paints such as Retributor Armor and Runelock Brass, mix it up and just base coat the areas on this model. However, for my version of Laukavai, I'm going to be doing her in non-metallic metals, which is using non-metallic metal paints such as browns, ochres, yellows to render metallic surfaces to give the illusion that these areas are actually metallic in nature. Also, do check out the video where I give you 4 tips which you can do under 5 minutes as I paint up Captain Imelda. Links will be in the description below. For this chapter, you're going to need these colours right here. Alright, let's get these colours ready. And remember, you can use this tutorial to paint up the brass surfaces on all your Soulblight Gravelord models. Brass is a really good complement to the red armour which we have painted previously. And let's get started painting the brass on Laukavai right now. So for the non-metallic metal brass, I'm going to be base coating the surfaces in AK Gen 3 chocolate. So now that we've done with the base coat of chocolate, currently what I'm using here is AK Gen 3 Green Brown. The Green Brown, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to pick up the initial highlights and I'm trying to make sure that this crest on Laukavai is looking pretty sharp. So I'm picking on the surfaces that will catch the light the most as such. Okay, gradually, right here, I'm adding in a little bit of AK Gentry Deck 10. I find Deck 10 a pretty useful middle colour because it's kind of warm and neutral and it doesn't stand out too much. So it's still just going along with the Deck 10 and I'm just picking out some of the raised detail. Currently, I'm adding in a little bit of AK Gentry Pastel Blue. I'm trying to cool down the temperature here and create this contrast of this bluish brass metal over the red armor. What I would say for the brass is I really like this new paint range because it's really opaque and I don't have to go over too many layers. Okay, now gradually I'm adding in just little touches of AK Gentry Pastel Green. This pastel green will look very nice contrasted against the red armor that I painted on Laukavai. Oops, just cleaning up a little bit there and there we have it. So now that we have done with the brass, we can move on to the next chapter which is non-metallic metal silver. I've explained the use of non-metallic metals and how it's done in my previous chapter. So if you need a revision on that, do play back the previous chapter where I painted the non-metallic metal brass. So for the non-metallic metal silver, you're going to need these colours right here. And do note that because metals are fundamentally miniature mirrors and we are going to pick up a lot of reflected light, silver is going to be something quite special. So let's get painting non-metallic metal silver on her sword right now. So how I approach non-metallic metal, I like to highlight the areas that are facing the light and I work on the shadow separately. So right here I'm using 
AK Gen 3 Russian Green mixed in in a 50-50 ratio with AK Gen 3 Dark Blue Grey as the base coat. Okay. Gradually, I'm adding in little bit by little bit more of AK Gen 3 buff and starting to warm up this color that we have created. What I want to do is I want to make this silver slightly warmer, almost like a steel color so that it contrasts against the entirely cool model that we have created so far. I'm applying this in a sort of scratchy fashion. Currently, I'm still adding in a little bit of AK Gen 3 buff right now. So apologize for the lack of focus. The footage should come into focus pretty shortly. Camera just does that sometimes. But one point that I like to bring up even when the footage is slightly blurred is that you should be able to tell the highlights clearly even though they are, well, the video is blurred. Okay? So now that the focus is back, I'm gradually adding in a little bit of AK Gentry Pale Sand and I'm just redefining the highlights of the little bit of speckles on the sword. So I'm just creating a lot more speckling on the sword to give it that metallic sheen of non-metallic metal. So moving on, I'm adding in, just for the highest shine, AK Gen 3 Ivory right now. I'm just being very careful to draw the edge highlights just to make sure that these look as sharp as possible to make this sword look really glimmering in the light. So now we are going to work on the reflected light which is at the bottom. Currently I'm using a mix of AK Gen 3 Light Rust with a little bit of AK Gen 3 Deep Red. I want to make sure that this progression towards the bottom of the sword becomes increasingly red to showcase the red glow that we are creating on the model. So right here I'm gradually adding in more AK Gen 3 Deep Red. So I apologize for the lack of focus because yeah, the sword is really small and camera just does weird things sometimes when I'm painting. Gradually adding in little bits of reflection. Ah, okay, good. So now, right here, I'm trying to create a stronger reflected light. I'm adding in a little bit of AK Gentry Deck 10. And on the other end, I'm adding in a little bit of AK Gentry Dead Red. So now that all the metallic surfaces have been complete, let's look at painting something organic once again. We're going to be focusing on soul blight vampire skin in this chapter. The concept of painting soul blight skin is to give the audience the idea that once upon a time, these characters were once human. Because they were human, the composition of the material such as skin is the same as human as well. However, what gives them the cold and undead look is because their blood has been drained and the life has been drained out of them. And this will influence how we do the other painting on Soul Blood Grave Lord skin. So instead of using a warm green base like how I usually paint out human flesh, I'm going to be varying this by using a cold turquoise color as the base for my Soul Blood Grave Lords. For this chapter, you're going to need these colors right here. Let's get these colors ready. And let's get started painting our Soul Blood Grave Lord skin right now. So the entire face has been airbrushed and currently it's been airbrushed as AK Gen 3 Turquoise and I'm using a washed down version of Games Workshop Atonian Camo Shade. Okay, so here's the fun part. This is Salmon from AK Gen 3 mixed in with a little bit of AK Gen 3 Dark Green Grey and I'm placing in the highlights of the face. I'm doing this pretty liberally and just all over the main areas that catch light. 
this is the warm areas that will be standing out from the cool shadows that we have created using the airbrush. Gradually, I'm adding in a little bit of AK Gen 3 salmon and just reinforcing some of these areas. As for the shadows right here, I'm using AK Gen 3 Russian Green. The Russian Green mixed in with Burn Red will serve as a very deep shadow and will refine the face by a lot. Using the same mix, I'm currently reinforcing the shadows on the nose and the eyes. So right here, I'm going to be using AK Gen 3 Luminous Splash to paint in the Scalera as well as her fangs on Laugavai. So right here, I'm going to be using just pure salmon mixed in with a little bit of luminous flesh. This red tinted flesh tone gives a little bit of life in this undead model. And right here, I want you to notice that I'm not even blending because in the next step, where I just apply the AK Gen 3 luminous flesh, what happens is that this covers over the base coat that we've done and it sort of like makes the red areas look a lot more subdued and it is through this subdued manner that I'm trying to portray a little bit of life that was in, in this human being that was locker by. So right here I'm currently using AK Gen 3 Ivory mixed in with a little bit of AK Gen 3 Luminous Flash. This is an even brighter value that I'm trying to create on the brows of Laukavai as well as her forehead. Remember, you can use this tutorial to paint any soul blight skin you want. The tips are to just use a cool green base and gradually move to a warm green base and finish off with a neutral-ish highlight. So now that we have done the Soul Blood Grave Lord skin on Laukavine, let's see how to render her white hair. I've been really enamored by the cover art on the Battle Toad, and I want to see how I can render this on the model with white hair. But the skin tone is really cool, so the only thing I can do is to use a warm grey to pair it with the cool skin tone that I've created on Laukavine. So for this stage, you're going to need these colours right here. Let's get these colours ready. And let's get started painting the white hair on Laukavai. As for the hair, what I'm base coating the model in is AK Gen 3 Camouflage Green mixed in with a little bit of AK Gen 3 Dark Sea Grey. This creates this very neutral matted green grey colour. Gradually, I'm adding in a little bit more deck tan into the mix and I'm starting to create the hair texture. How I want this hair is, I want it to be grey and white still but then I want it to be a warm colour to contrast against the cooler skin tone. Gradually, slowly but surely, adding in a little bit more AK Gen 3 Deck 10 and scratching up the surfaces to show the sheen of the hair. And right at the very end, right here I'm going to be using AK Gen 3 Ivory mixed in to the previous mix and I'm just gradually picking up the textures of the hair to showcase that this hair is nice, grey and shiny. So now that we have done with the model, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some tips to construct a coherent base for your entire Soul Blood Grave Lord army. For this stage, you're going to need the following materials right here. Don't worry because I will be producing a comprehensive video of how to base your models in the future. So look out for that. The focus of this chapter is how to paint stone and masonry on the Soul Blight Grave Lord's bases. Because as you can see, many of the Soul Blight Grave Lord models come with some kind of ruin or some kind of stone in them. So let's finish the model and let's get painting Laukavai's base right now. So right here you can see some blue foam that I've cut out from a previous project. I'm sticking down some 3D printed cobblestones right here. 
I'm currently coating the entire base in water glue or you could just use PVA glue. What this does is this serves as a protective layer. If I prime the model in some spray can, this prevents the blue foam from sort of like corroding. And I'm just using some super glue and I'm pasting in part of Laukavai's base right here. Just putting everything in place before we move on to the next stage. Right here, I'm using AK Dark Earth and I'm just sort of just slathering this texture paste all over the model. This color is not important at all. You can use any texture paste. To me, this at this point of time, I'm just creating textures so that eventually I can paint over the textures and create an interesting looking surface. Just make sure that you fill in all the gaps and there are no strange gaps around. So right here, I'm using AK Dry Earth. I like to use different types of texture paint because they create different reliefs and I find that in real life, there are definitely a variation of feels and textures. That's why I do not ever just use one texture piece. Just go around, mix, and give it different textures before I'm going to prime the entire thing in Liquitex Black. Okay, so right here I'm using a pair of tweezers and I'm just going to be squeezing in some Citadel skulls. I find that adding skulls to the base adds a little bit more narrative and makes this base look a little bit more interesting because it gives a change in texture. It's not just sand and mud, there's some smooth surfaces and people will just look at well, the people that died on this base. And just adding in some tufts right here. These tufts are from Games Workshop. I used to make my own tufts but I just realized that it's so much more convenient to buy the tufts from Games Workshop because yeah, they are really quite beautiful. Color doesn't really matter here anyway. So now that the entire surface has been primed black, I'm going to be replicating the airbrush stage again and I will catch you in a little bit. If you're not sure what colors I use for the airbrush stage, why not just head on to the airbrush section where I will be covering that. So this is one of my bad habits. I always like to disassemble and assemble the model just to check the lighting situation. And there we have it. That's the lighting done using the airbrush using the same colors. So right here, I'm going to be creating the stonework and I'm currently using dark blue gray and I'm scratching out the surfaces on the masonry. Just creating some textures on the areas that are not facing the red glow. Just do take note that you want to move this concentration further away from the red glow so that there's a temperature variation and a transition between the warm and cool areas of this space. Now I'm just scratching the surface with AK Gen 3 Pale Blue. This scratching technique I've learned in, from my Wolfen Watch video and I find it very interesting because it creates such minute textures and it's very fast. It creates a very fast tabletop looking surface without too much time being spent. So moving on, I'm moving on to the next highlight, just becoming gradually more and more careful. I'm going to be using AK Gen 3 Pastel Green from here and I'm just going to be continuing to scratch the surface. This creates very minute textures which are well, in my opinion, looking a lot more interesting than just layering. And there we have it. This is the comprehensive guide of how to paint Soul Blood Grave Lots models. 
and this is the final result for Laukavai. Remember, I've covered many different materials which you can use for a variety of your Soulblight Gravelock models. The Soulblight flesh can be used to paint all your Soulblight skin and the hair if you wish to paint any of your Soulblight models with grey hair. The red can be used to paint the Castellai Blood Knights which was just released recently and you can also use the Bestial skin to paint out the next Vangori lot. So this has been our comprehensive series. Let us know which other faction you would like to see us paint with this comprehensive series and I'll catch you in just a little bit. So as a recap to this video, right here, these are the chapters that we have covered for Soul Blight Grave Lords. Firstly, priming and airbrushing. Secondly, the bestial body from the Avangori dynasty. Thirdly, is the Castellai dynasty red armor. Then we're going to do black cloth, which you can use for the capes and other cloth materials to pair up with your Soul Blight Grave Lords. Moving on, we have done the shiny non-metallic metal brass and non-metallic metal silver. Then we have moved on to the Soul Blight Grave Lord skin and hair on Lauka Vine. Lastly, we closed off the tutorial doing the base construction as well as the stone masonry masterclass. So I hope you found this video useful and thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. This video was a really, really ambitious endeavor on our part and we really want to create comprehensive videos of how to paint each army to a really, really awesome standard. So if you could, please give us a like and subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon because this really helps us, keeps the lights in the studio on and keeps me producing painting tutorials such as this. I'd like to thank my patrons for supporting me all the way and if you want to support the channel even further, head on to our Patreon and sign up and get a whole slew of painting tutorials which we have done over the past year or so. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. Paint up your Soul Black Gravelock models and we'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.